potential, having or showing the capacity to become or develop into something in the future. Let's delve briefly into the life of Sophia Hayden, an outstanding student and promising architect during Chicago's golden age. Sophia Hayden was born in Santiago, Chile, October 17, 1868. Her mother, Elizena Fernandez Hayden, was from Peru and her father, George Henry Hayden, was an American dentist from Boston, Massachusetts. When she was six years old, her parents sent her to live with her grandparents in Jamaica Plain, a suburb of Boston. During her years attending West Roxbury High School from 1883 to 1886, she found an interest in architecture and was accepted into MIT, becoming the first woman to be admitted into the four-year program. She shared a drafting room with Lois Lily Howe, who later started the first all-female architecture firm in Boston with the help of her politically active and well-connected family. Hayden completed her thesis by designing a museum of fine arts. She graduated with a degree in architecture in 1890 with honors. Upon graduation, Hayden sought an apprenticeship, which is usually the road taken in this field. However, due to her gender, it was challenging to find a position. In my research of Hayden, some of the female architects of her time had to start their own firms or partner with other women to work steadily. Sophia didn't take that route. Entrepreneurship just really isn't for everyone. So she accepted a teaching position at a Boston grammar school in mechanical drawing. In 1891, an opportunity presented itself to push her limits in creativity and intelligence by participating in a contest to design the women's building for the World's Columbian Exposition, otherwise known as the World's Fair, where nearly half the country attended at 27 million visitors. It's also where the first Ferris wheel was born and where candied popcorn was first served, later named Cracker Jacks. Sophia's building would showcase art created only by women. However, there was some backlash because the female artists were upset that their work would not be displayed alongside the men. I can understand why there would be some animosity. The late 19th century was a dynamic time for women's movement. In 1890, two influential organizations, the National Women's Suffrage Association and the American Women's Suffrage Association, merged to form the National American Women's Suffrage Association, which drew support from several other organizations. Their relentless work toward women's right to vote emboldened other organizations to take up the fight. For example, the National Women's Party took a far more aggressive role and organized demonstrations against the government when they thought they were moving too slowly. Over the years, the right to vote was extended to women state by state, and by 1920, 36 states passed the 19th Amendment, which secured women the right to vote. I'm only mentioning these events to give a better idea of the atmosphere Sophia Hayden found herself in when she was designing a building that would essentially segregate art between men and women. Other notable women were expected to compete, such as Louise Bethune, one of the most respected contemporary female practitioners, and possibly the first woman to work professionally as an architect. She refused to enter the competition because of the massive divide between the men and women's prize money. Hayden won the competition at only 21 years old, designing a white three-story building with an Italian Renaissance style, decked with arches and column terraces. She won $1,000 while her male counterparts were paid three to 10 times that much. Her building was described as a delicacy of style, artistic taste, and geniality and elegance of the interior hall. Detractors described it as too feminine, although they complimented her on her evident technical knowledge. The critics thought it fell short in scale compared to the male architects. She was instructed to stay within the confines of the parameters that were laid out, which was the building had to be no more than two stories tall and 80,000 square feet. But I am sure architects are used to constant changes from the client. And Hayden was not spared by this either, even though her design won the competition. During the construction of her building, the plans were changed continuously by Bertha Palmer, who headed the construction committee and organized the competition. Palmer demanded a new floor, making it three stories tall 
and to use adornments gifted to her from wealthy friends. But Hayden refused because it would compromise the aesthetics of her design. Unfortunately, as a result, Palmer dismissed Hayden from the project. Hayden gained support from her peers and still walked away with an artist medal and the gold medal from the Board of Lady Managers, which was awarded by Daniel H. Burnham, the director of works at the exposition. Incidentally, Sophia's gold medal was recently sold at an auction in January of 2019 for $16,000. The bidding started at about $2,500. I wish I could have been there. Not saying I could have bid on it, but it would have been an exciting thing to see. The woman's building was torn down shortly after the exposition ended. They were designed to be temporary structures. That's why Sophia's building was made with iron, wood, and plaster to give the illusion of stone. Many of the buildings burned to the ground and the rest destroyed, except for a few, which will be covered in a future video. There were rumors that she had a nervous breakdown, contributed by all of the demands from Palmer, the deadline, and construction workers not taking her very seriously, which unfortunately others used as evidence that a woman should not be in this field of work. She graduated from MIT with honors, won a prestigious competition, and retired by the age of 21. I wonder how life would have unfolded for Sophia if she went down a different road and perhaps encountered more positive and supportive people. Lois Lily Howe, her friend back at MIT, won second place in the same competition and used the $500 to travel in Europe for 18 months with her mother and sister. When Lois returned to the U.S., she visited the exposition and then started her firm, had a lifelong career in architecture, and died in 1964, just two weeks shy from her 100th birthday. Seven years later, after the World's Fair in 1900, Sophia married William Blackstone Bennett, a portrait painter and interior designer. Bennett had a daughter from a previous marriage, Jenny May Bennett, but they never had children together. William died a few years later of pneumonia in 1909, and Sophia lived quietly as an artist in Massachusetts and passed away in 1953. I hope you enjoyed the video. I will be focusing on the Chicago World's Fair more in the future. So please subscribe and hit the notification button. Thank you.